Welcome back. Before discussing algorithms of collecting the garbage, we need to see how these objects, which eventually become a garbage, are allocated on the heap. In today's lecture, we consider mechanisms of memory allocation. This is also a lab session where you will be implementing a memory allocator uh, similar to the one used in malloc function. Please address the following URL to find a detailed description of the topic and the lab assignments. In addition, we discuss the theory behind the allocators, uh, talking about sequential, uh, also known as the bump allocators, and uh, the free list allocators. From the previous lecture about the memory layout, we remember that to allocate a memory from an operating system means to map more memory for this process. So the heap is located in this region, and uh, as we see, grows upwards towards the higher addresses. And uh, the area in between of the stack and the heap is known as the unmapped area. Mapping is controlled by the position of the program break. And to control the position of the break pointer, we can use several system calls. Let's focus on the heap area specifically and uh, call it abstractly just free uh, instead of unmapped. And uh, let's display it horizontally so we can allocate more objects in our examples. Let's also use the abstract alloc pointer instead of the break pointer. Uh, which is specific for operating system, uh, showing that here we focus mainly on the theoretical aspects and the generic algorithms. Okay, and now let's allocate an object graph on this heap. So we allocate object A pointed by the root, and a root is a known reachable reference, such as a variable or a register. From a user code perspective, it may look like this. All right, so we allocated the object A and uh, assign it to the root variable. Then we allocate uh, the object B, pointed from A. Uh, we allocate the object C, pointed, uh, let's say, also from A. Then the object D, pointed from B. And uh, finally, the object E, pointed from C. And then let's say at some point we have lost the connection from A to B object, here. This makes the object B, as well as its direct child, the object D, unreachable from the root. And uh, they become good candidates for the garbage collection. But yet, uh, let's continue allocating the objects. So we allocate the next object f, and as previously just bumping the allocation pointer. Such allocation strategy is known as the sequential allocation, or the bump allocation. What this means, we don't try to reuse right away any of the existing free blocks, uh, such as b or d, and just continue bumping the allocation pointer further. Running forward, we should say that not every system allows using the bump allocator, uh, since usually it assumes relocating objects around on the collection cycle. The main advantages of the bump allocation is that it's really fast, uh, similar to the stack allocation. However, as we said, systems which expose the pointer semantics, uh, such as C or C++, cannot simply relocate the objects around and have to reuse previously freed blocks. So let's take a look at this example. So if we need to reuse the free blocks right away, uh, we need to add them to what is known as the free list, that is the linked list of all available blocks on the heap. And uh, then when we receive a request to allocate an object f, uh, the free list allocator have to search for a block of a suitable size, traversing this free list. Once the block is found, it's reused. Again, such allocation is known as the free list allocation. The free list allocation is usually slower than the bump allocator uh, due to searching overhead However, there are some optimizations which allow speeding up the search. So to state it in one sentence, uh, the sequential allocator just increases the allocation pointer, uh, leaving the garbage behind. A pool allocator is an example of such uh, sequential allocation. And uh, the free list allocator have to track the free blocks in a list-like data structure and reuse them. Since implementing a sequential allocator is trivial, uh, we just track the allocation and the end of the heap pointers. Let's focus on the different algorithms related to the free list allocation. Now, there are several strategies how the free list search can be implemented. These are first fit, next fit, best fit, and uh, segregated fit. Let's quickly see the specifics of each of the algorithms. Uh, and again, in the lab assignment, uh, you're going to implement all of them. The first fit strategy just finds the first block which fits the size, and uh, the free list is updated accordingly. In addition, if a found block is larger than the requested, we can optionally split the block, uh, tracking only the chunk of any needed size. Let's take a look at the example from the lab session. 
So we traverse all the blocks, uh, starting at the beginning position. And if the size of the analyzing block doesn't fit, uh, we just go to the next block. Otherwise, we return the found block and it can be reused. If nothing is found, we return the null pointer and uh, this is the sign that we have to request more memory from the operating system. Okay, let's see now at the improvement of the first fit, known as the next fit search. The next fit allocation is a variation of the first fit, but starts the search from the previous successful position. This allows skipping smaller blocks located at the beginning of the heap and uh, locating the needed blocks faster. So in this example, when we found this block and then receive a similar request, we start from the previous successful position, skipping traversal of all the blocks at the beginning. When we reach the end of the heap, we start over until we reach the start position. So sometimes uh, the strategy is called circular first fit allocation. The implementation of the next fit algorithm is left to you as an assignment, uh, so please find uh, the details in the appropriate lab session. Finally, the best fit strategy allows us locating a block uh, which size fits the best. Let's say uh, this block is of size 8, uh, this one is uh, 64, and this one is 16. And we receive a request for 16 bytes. The first and next strategies would return the second block, uh, potentially splitting it, while the best fit returns the third block, which fits the best, and doesn't require splitting the block, uh, wasting resources and time. Okay, now let's see at the most optimized searching algorithm uh, used in many production allocators. The approach is known as the segregated list. The problem with the previous strategies we discussed is that they require traversing the blocks of different sizes until we find a block of a requested size. This can dramatically slow down a search for blocks of predefined sizes. The idea of the segregated list is to partition the heap and uh, group the allocating blocks by size. Then when we receive a request, uh, say for 16 bytes, uh, we directly jump to the second bucket and allocate from there. That is, instead of one free list, we just have multiple free lists. But each list contains blocks only of a certain size. Okay, let's do a quick recap of the allocation topic. As we said, there are two major allocation types. Uh, the sequential, that is the bump allocator, and uh, the free list allocator. The sequential allocator is simple and fast, uh, similar to the stack allocation, However, it implies relocating the objects around, uh, which might not be possible if a language exposed the pointer semantics. The sequential allocator is used by the Mark Compact, copying, and uh, generation collectors, as we will see further in this class. The free list allocator has to reuse the freed blocks, and for this it tracks them in a list-like data structure. We also said there are several strategies for searching these free blocks. Uh, these are uh, first fit, next fit, best fit and the segregated fit. And uh, the free list allocator is used in systems uh, with mark sweep and reference count in garbage collectors, and also in system with uh, manual memory management. Now when we know how to allocate objects, let's move forward and see how these objects become a garbage. We start the discussion with considering two types of the garbage, known as semantic and syntactic garbage, and uh, which we'll be discussing in the next video.